That little speck in the sky that I'm having trouble tracking with my camera is a Unmanned Aerial System, or UAS. You probably heard a lot about drones and UAVs and such. Now there's a whole bunch of these commercially available UASs for surveying and mapping. Now when an acquaintance of mine called up and said, you want to come up to a flight school for a new type of UAS, my inner geek is jumping up and down. Of course I had to go do it. Why these are called a UAS as opposed to a UAV is the UAV is kind of a, the plane part. The UAS is the complete system. You program this thing, it goes and does its mission, comes back, you download the photographs and the log files, you orthorectify them in the software, and you produce point clouds for digital terrain models. And the entire process from pre-planning the flight, the flights, the download, and the processing of the data is taught in typically a four-day class. This one was in Calgary, Canada. After intensive classroom time learning about every component of the system, multiple checklists before going to the field, a little bit about aviation law related to the UAS's camera settings, uh, operations of the autopilot, and the planning software. We headed out to a farm near Calgary, assembled the launching catapult, and went over the checklists one more time. You don't actually fly the unit. It flies itself on this predetermined pattern. You can override some of the movements uh, if there's an emergency or uh, some hazard to avoid. But pretty much it takes off and comes home where you tell it to. You have two-way communications with it. If you lose contact with it after a certain period of time, it's just going to turn around and come back to the landing spot automatically. Uh, if you happen to lose it out of sight, there's a homing beacon in it. You can track it down. To provide an even better geo-registration of the uh, end products, the phone went out and set some ground panels with the uh, local VRS network up there. Had to chase away a few curious cows, and we continued to fly training missions all through to the next day, which was quite windy and rainy. Even with a uh, fairly stiff crosswind, the one landing there came in within three feet of the mark we had pre-established with GPS. The weight limit for this class of UAS is two kilograms, 4.4 pounds, and it's amazing what they pack in there with the autopilot uh, engine and battery that lasts 45 minutes and moves that thing along at 80 kilometers an hour or more. Uh, very stable in flight, flies more like a jet fighter than a glider type. This isn't really like a hobbyist's remote controlled aircraft. This thing, to perform what it needs to do, it, it's pretty much got to fly autonomously. To assist the autopilot, there's uh, GPS for guidance, potentiometers for pitch, yaw, and roll, and a pitot tube for airspeed. Working these together, the thing stays amazingly on track and lands where you intended it to. This particular unit is uh, by Gateway and it's an X100. And there's uh, lots of types of UASs. There's the helicopter type and some glider types and, and some like this. But I have to say I was duly impressed at the completeness of the whole package. You can read up more on this in the July 2012 issue of Professional Surveyor and a follow-up article probably in August or September 2012.